1987 saw the release of the teen comedy film Can't Buy Me Love and it was directed by Steve Rash and starred Patrick Dempsey and Amanda Peterson. Originally titled Boy Rents Girl, Can't Buy Me Love is a story of Ronald Miller, an unpopular nerd who craves to be a part of the popular crowd in his high school and mows lawns to earn enough for a telescope he's had his eye on for quite a while. Yeah, $1,500. Yeah, I mowed 331 miles of grass this summer. That's $4.54 per mile. Mm, the Ronald Miller story. My life on a mower. He goes to the local mall to buy his $1,000 telescope, but is distracted when he sees Cindy Mancini, the most popular girl in school. His only entry and chance to get into the popular club comes when Cindy is faced with a dilemma. She has ruined her mum's new suede outfit and needs to buy a replacement or she'll be in big trouble if her mum finds out. Ronald sees his opportunity and offers her $1,000 to rent her in order for him to become popular. She at first rejects the idea but is so desperate she takes the offer. Through the course of this film, he gains entry into the popular club and becomes the most popular guy in school, but learns being popular isn't what it's cracked up to be. Uh, as, as, as funny as this movie might be, there's a certain sadness to, uh, to somebody um, paying someone to say, you know, help me to be popular. Yeah, there is a sadness. I think that in the sense, you know, our movie really, you know, it, it initiates that at first, but it is also carried through the film that shows that, you know, it really came out to be something different. And, you know, it had its advantages just because I think Cindy was the type of person who probably wouldn't have gotten to know Ronald, mm. you know, without the money. Yes. But, you know, and that's unfortunate. But she did, and she got to know him, and she decided that's what she wanted to know. The film was shot in and around Tucson, Arizona, and Tucson High School. The filmmakers decided to make this a non-union film. The Screen Actors Guild protested the filming going as far as to send representatives to discourage the students from appearing in the film. The students still decided to appear in the film, but none of the school's drama students made an appearance in the film. The film was directed by Steve Rash, who has made a number of films in his career, but most were mainly B-grade, straight to DVD films. His most well-known film was The Buddy Holly Story, starring Gary Busey in 1979. Patrick Dempsey, who played Ronald Miller, had come from the stage, and prior to that had only done one film. When he came in, I just recognized instantly that he was one of those rare people that you meet occasionally who have that gift. I've probably in my career only met three that I would say truly had that, the gift, and I immediately knew that he was my star. Ronald um, has a fatal flaw in that he wants to be popular, um, and he doesn't really know what that means. He just knows what he sees from the outside, and his failure is really to not understand the value of himself within himself. Dempsey, after the success of Can't Buy Me Love, starred in a string of films in the late 80s and had a rather successful career in the 90s through to the 2000s with films like Mobsters, Coupe de Ville, Outbreak, With Honours, Scream 3. His most well-known role is in the hit TV show Grey's Anatomy as Dr. Derek Shepard. Amanda Peterson, who played Cindy Mancini, was a relative unknown before she did Can't Buy Me Love. As a child, she was an extra in the hit musical Annie. She starred in a number of TV roles before landing her first big feature film role in the Joe Dante science fiction fantasy comedy Explorers in 1985 and starred alongside up-and-coming young actors like Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix. Can't Buy Me Love was her second film, but after couldn't seem to get the big roles. Her most notable film role after Can't Buy Me Love was Listen To Me in 1989. The film co-starred Roy Scheider, Jamie Gertz and Kirk Cameron. In 1994, she quit the acting game and sadly, 
Just recently, there was news of her untimely death. Patrick Dempsey is paying tribute to his late Can't Buy Me Love co-star Amanda Peterson. The former Grey's Anatomy actor tweeted, In my memory, she will always be vibrant and young. Gone too soon. Sending my thoughts and prayers to Amanda's family. E! News confirmed yesterday that Peterson passed away at the age of 43 and was found dead in her Colorado home by the local police department. Officers were sent to her home after family members became concerned after not hearing from her for several days. Peterson's cause of death is still under investigation. Co-stars included Dennis Duggan as Ronald's father, and he was mostly known for his directing work on Adam Sandler films like Happy Gilmore and Big Daddy. A very young Seth Green plays Ronald's bratty little brother. Seth is better known for his film and TV work on shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Family Guy, and he is the co-creator of Robot Chicken. He, of course, played Scott Evil in the Austin Powers films and featured in a movie called Can't Hardly Wait. Courtney Gaines was well known for his roles in films like Children of the Corn, Back to the Future, and The Burbs, plays Ronald's geeky best friend. Also seen in the film is Amy Dolans, daughter of famous monkey Mickey Dolans. She went on to star that same year in She's Out of Control. Also featured in Can't Buy Me Love was the dance choreography by pop star Paula Abdul. Can't Buy Me Love enjoyed moderate success at the box office, but had not so good reviews. One of them from critic Roger Ebert. Can't Buy Me Love makes American teenagers look like stupid and materialistic twits. That would be alright if the movie were aware of itself and knew what it was doing if it were a satirical comment on our society, but this movie is as naive as the day is long. It doesn't have a thought in its head and probably no notion of the corruption of its core. To me, regardless of the negative criticism, I love this movie. It's nowhere in the league of films like The Breakfast Club or Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but it has this rewatchability about it. When we made that movie, nobody expected it to do anything. People pretty much wrote it off, and then we had such a great time doing it, and then it opened and did really well. And it's, uh, you know, it tapped into a lot of things that people really identify with that character. Can't Buy Me Love was a surprise hit. I give him a tremendous amount of credit for the success of that movie. And also Disney bought the title Can't Buy Me Love from the Beatles, paid a fortune to use that song. And that song, I think, gave the film its credibility before it was released, so that instead of being this little teen independent film that would have disappeared, I think because of that song, people thought, well, maybe there is something there. Can't Buy Me Love has inspired and influenced many teen films. There was even a remake in 2003 called Love Don't Cost a Thing and at times is disturbingly the same film as Can't Buy Me Love. The film has its typical teen stereotypes, nerds, geeks, head cheerleaders, jocks and so on. Nothing much has changed in teen films, but Can't Buy Me Love is memorable. Guilty pleasure, you might say, or 80s teen classic. Thank <laughs> you.